Okay, we start. <coughs> Ooh. Sahana Bhavatu, Sahano Bhnaktu, Sahaviyam Karavahe, Ejas Vina Bhadita Mastuma Vidvisha Vahe. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Bhyona Hari Om Guru Brahma Guru Krishna Guru Devo Maheshwara Guru Reva Haram Brahma Tasmai Sri Gurave Nama Vasudeva Sutam Devam Kamsacha no ramadanam, Devaki paramanandam, Krishnam mandi jagatpuram. Samastajana kalyani, Neratam karuna mayam, Namami chin mayam devam, Sadhurum brahma vidpuram, Sadhurum brahma vidpuram. The, the waker is different from the dreamer. Waker is a rich man. In dream, he dreams he's a beggar. So therefore, both are different. Now, if both are different, waker you can understand. Who is this dreamer? Baker is sleeping. The sleeping entity cannot be the dreamer who is very active. Baker is a rich man, dreamer is begging. Who is this dreamer? It's not the waker. Is there possibility of somebody inside you? There is no possibility. Who is he? All of us are made up of the body and the thoughts. The dreamer is not the body, definitely this body. And the thoughts, again, they The thoughts themselves cannot know because if thoughts can know in sleep, in sleep, the thoughts are not knowing. In waking, thoughts are knowing. In dream, partially knowing. In sleep, Thoughts are not known. So therefore, thoughts do not have the capacity to know by themselves. These thoughts, when they parade before the waker's consciousness, these thoughts, when they parade before the waker's consciousness in sleep, become the dreamer. This dreamer Therefore, if you carefully analyze, is only a pseudo entity because there is nothing other than the waker or the thoughts possible. Thoughts cannot by themselves act. The waker is sleeping. Consciousness has no form. So, the dreamer is neither the waker, nor the thoughts, nor the consciousness. 
is a pseudo entity. What is a pseudo entity? An entity that does not exist, but appears as though he exists. On waking up, nobody seriously questions, why did I dream like this? Why did I dream like that? Nobody questions. They all know it's dream and keep quiet. On waking up, the entire dreamer has merged into the waker. The entire dreamer arose from the waker. Dreamer is an entity created by your thoughts in the presence of the consciousness. So if the waker withdraws from the dream, there is no dream character, dream world. If this much you have understood, waking is not different from dream. Waking is not different from dream. In dream, you, the dream world is your own mind. In waking, we are all dream characters of God. We are all dream characters of God. Who is that God? You only as consciousness. If you withdraw from the mind, identification with the mind, with the body, you exist as you are, like in deep sleep state. So in that state, there are none of the challenges or sorrows, birth, death of either the waker or the dreamer in sleep. Because in sleep, mind becomes dormant. You are not conscious of the body because only the mind knows the body. Mind only knows. That itself says it's not real, even this body. Because it, it, if it's real, consciousness also will know when sleeping. So therefore, mind only knows even the body. Therefore, it's also not real. Even that is not real. Is there something real? Yes. The one who remembers the waking dream deeply. Since he did not change as consciousness in waking, dream and deep sleep. Since he can remember all the three, he was there, he experienced. Otherwise, memory is not possible. He was there, he experienced, otherwise memory is not possible. He was there, he experienced, but neither the waker, nor the dreamer, not the deep sleeper. Somebody who is different from them, therefore he can take different roles. Somebody different from the waker, dreamer and deep sleeper, therefore he can take different roles. To know this, you have to withdraw from the waker's ego, the dreamer's ego, the ignorance, the vasanas of the deep sleep. To withdraw from the waker, dreamer and the deep sleeper, you should know what to withdraw from what to withdraw. Therefore, the discussion of this chapter on Chetra, Chetragna, Prakriti, Purusha, Nana, Naya. So that was the subject matter which we are deal dealing with. Not to be heard, not to repeat, to see in ourselves.
who is the seer who alone is real what is the seen which is not real as uh, that much reality as the dream world if you were not going to apply this knowledge to yourself and become liberated from all your confusions and accept that you are that consciousness this knowledge is also a burden it's also a burden this has to be contemplated i have given reasonable clues how to contemplate us now you have to do i can't do contemplation for you without contemplation you are only participating gurudev says participating is shravana manana is involvement nidhi dhyasana is commitment how can you ignore this uh, the entire world however beautiful it is however lucky you are not to have major challenges some are lucky by 10% not to have major challenges still it's so uncertain everything is uncertain if you do not have major challenges also your mind doesn't allow you to be in peace it has fears it has worries when you get old age that everybody has to go through so the nature of this world is nothing but concentrated sorrow if you are not aware you are only insensitive how can you ignore this knowledge which makes you know you are the god not attempting to first participate then involve then to commit and then to spread if you are not doing these things you are missing a great chance which was available to you given to you by god so this meditation has to be done therefore the greatness and importance of this chapter 13 chapter so up to now geeta acharya has done chetra chetra gnana gnanam naya now he is taking the other two terms prakriti and purusha prakriti and purusha in simple language prakriti or your nature vasanas which manifest as your thoughts purusha is the one who is sleeping who is there in sleep who is there in the waking who is there in the dream with the and the deep sleep this purusha has several dimensions one of the dimensions is even though when he is identifying with the body he knows himself to be different from that he has basically there are many three identities one to be the pure immaculate consciousness second to the mixed up ego third to be a witness third to be a witness this purusha has several dimensions which is the subject matter of the 15th chapter which we are going to do in the class after next so this purusha mixed up with thoughts become the waker become the dreamer this purusha withdraws from the thoughts and rests in vasanas he becomes the sleeper he becomes the sleeper this purusha if i he detaches himself from the body 
from the thoughts, from the vasanas. He is that immaculate supreme being, the consciousness. That is you. Who can make you God? Who can make you immortal? Who can make you free from fears? Who can make you free from sorrows? You have to do, because you are the one who is caught up in them. You have to detach from them. God cannot help. Because God is sitting in you, wanting you to own him. Your attention is everywhere. What can he do? He is in you, waiting to do anything for you, but you are not turning your attention to him. So therefore, you have to know this Prakriti. This Prakriti and the Purusha. Purusha has several dimensions. Withdraw from each of them and remain as the absolute Purusha. Purusha, Chara Purusha, the one continuously changing. Akshara Purusha, witness. And Purushottama, beyond both. Beyond Chara and Akshara, Purushottama. I have given you a picture of the world and our life. I could not give you the real sad situation of the world because you do not want to know it. You only want some soothing words. You are not you, you are uh, all our life is only escapism. There is no real life. If you start inquiring, the real life is nothing but a bundle of fears and sorrows. You have to withdraw. You have to withdraw from that. Therefore, you have to know the Prakriti, you have to know Purusha. Prakriti is continuously changing. Purusha appears to change in different layers, but it doesn't change. Prakriti continuously changing. Like Gurudev's example, different buckets. In one bucket, the water is muddy. In another bucket, it's clear. In another bucket, it is agitated. When the sun reflects in the muddy waters, you can't see the reflection. In clear waters, you can see. Agitated waters, the sun is broken. The whole waters, buckets, are all called Prakriti. Sun is called Purusha. You are the Purusha. Your body, your mind, your intellect, your vasana, are all Prakriti. Detach and assert. Detach from what you are not. Assert what you are. This is called meditation. Abhyasa, Vairagya. Vairagya to detach. Abhyasa to asa. Right? So the topic of Prakriti and Purusha are taken. How? Vikarāṁsca. Vikarāṁsca gunāṁsca. Vidhi Prakriti sambhava. Both this Prakriti and Purusha, they are beginningless. Like the sun and the sunlight have, could never be separated. Sunlight is the Prakriti. Sun is the Purusha. Similarly, Bhagavan and his nature, Prakriti, cannot be separated. And the Prakriti, along with its various manifestations, starting with Gunas, they are also timeless, beginningless, because they are nothing but Bhagavan, like the sunlight and the sun. And the various things in the world we see are made up of different characteristics. These are called Gunas. 
these gunas good bad ugly are all modifications of the prakriti karya karana kartrutve hetuhu prakriti uchchati purusha sukha dukkana bhuktrutve hetu ruchchati prakriti vasanas or the cause right yeah i can hear you huh yeah i can hear you uncle yeah we'll go we'll go ahead so prakriti vasanas are the is the cause for cause and effect all our life is cause and effect you did this you get this results it's all cause and effect the cause and effect is caused by prakriti but prakriti thoughts i said vasanas are inert you cannot experience them without the purusha so the purusha is the one who is the enjoyer and the knower of the prakriti so therefore karya karana or karana in some books it's karana instruments in some books it's karana karya karana effects and instruments or cause and effect these are created by the prakriti purusha is the cause for enjoyer sukha dukkana bhoktrutve hetu ruchyate he is the cause to enjoy to to make us enjoy the joys and sorrows of life how does he do purusha prakriti stohi bhunte prakriti jan guna karanam guna sangosya sadasadyoni dhatsu this purusha staying in this prakriti this purusha staying in this prakriti becomes as though the enjoyer of the various things that are born out of prakriti and gunas out of prakriti and gunas this purusha stays in the body and becomes the enjoyer of these various gunas karanam guna sangosya sad sad janma yoni this enjoyment leaves certain footprints in us they are called vasanas it is these vasanas that decide our life next this these vasanas decide our next life whether you should be born as a human being whether you should be born as a sattvic human being whether you should be born as a rajasic human being tamasic human being or an animal or a stone or a plant they are decided by the qualities by the qualities these qualities are gathered by you in several lives and according to those qualities you take the next life purushaha prakriti stohi bhunte prakriti jan guna karanam guna sangosya sad asad yoni janmasu so in different wombs good and bad good and are real and unreal no in this context it's only good and bad but in fact in fact up to a certain extent this is true a 
a person who sleeps as a doctor cannot get up as an engineer next year morning a person who sleeps as a sensuous man cannot wake up suddenly as a saint because each one manifest our own vasanas so naturally whatever vasanas we gather that defines our personality if we are too lazy you know then we'll be born as a stone or a plant if we are greedy we'll be born rajasi if we are contemplative we'll be born sattvic if we are animalistic we'll be born as an animal what is the use of this information to you you can decide what you want to be you can decide what you want to be in fact what you are today is what you have decided earlier you can decide what you want to be in fact what you are today is what you have decided earlier have i decided to be sick yes you had certain habits you were taking certain food you were ignoring certain uh, guidelines like exercise health and all, walking and all that and therefore you are like this who oh, born there are people born with born disease that also you have given this blueprint in your earlier life so we can change our life now subject to the conditioning of your past this is the normal so called advice of sadhana you can change you can change your habits you can change your values i said this is the normal advice so what is different from that you have i say ignore all of them and say all of them belong to the prakriti to the vasanas to the inert matter uh, to only appearances not real i am different from them pain belongs to the body agitations belong to the mind alertness dullness belongs to the intellect and i am not any one of them i am different this is the simplest direct method of continuous 24 into 7 meditation simplest direct meditation but then am i trying to contradict the mahatmas who have given several values several sadhanas no i am not contradicting because a completely sensuous man a completely egoistic man will not be able to first under that therefore the sadhana recommended by mahatmas has to be followed but you do not assume that you have to go through all that then you will come and some day you will know no you try this easier method where there are problems go back that's a better way you try to see the seer and the seen all seen is prakriti the seer is the subject purusha try to see whatever you are able to objectify is not even self the body you can objectify mind you you can objectify all that is not you all problems belong to them you don't have any problems this is a direct method you try 
when you have difficulties go back for sadhana trying to purify yourself through selfless service through love through devotion through upasana try but do not assume that you cannot understand this and practice this because that will be a speculative thing you do not know when you will really get it but the process i am telling you can get it straight away try this wherever there are obstacles go to your teacher ask him he will guide you many of you think many of you think reading books listening to tapes videos you can get the knowledge you need a personal guru there is no alternative to that so choose your guru whoever he is maintain continuous constant satsang with him sadhu also you need the contact of sadhus many people do not have the satsang contact with sadhus and gurus therefore their progress is too too slow okay so therefore he says the purusha is the one who enjoys so you try to detach the enjoyed from the enjoyer chetra from the chetragna what remains is pure knowledge knower plus the field is the no knower plus the field is the knower of the field knower of the field minus the field is knowledge knower plus the field or consciousness plus the field becomes the knower of the field consciousness plus the field when the consciousness identifies becomes the knower of the field knower of the field minus the field becomes pure consciousness so therefore what is the field whatever you can objectify is a field so whatever you can objectify you dismiss this is not me because that's object who am i that which cannot be dismissed after dismissing everything is me the subject this process is called neti 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 and after you do the negation neti 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 what remains is me chidananda roopah shivoham shivoham shivoh practice this and then he said earlier he takes different births according to the vasanas how this purusha takes different dimensions according to the vasanas how the one son appears to be broken not clear in muddy waters clear according to the reflecting media this purusha functioning through identifying with sattva rajas and tamas waking dream deep sleep he appears to be different how old does he differ that's the next to us upadrastanu manta cha bhakta bhukta maheshwara परमात्मे she is groaning in herself but cannot do anything with him so she becomes a mere witness similarly when all our vasanas 
are too thick. God is not able to help you to evolve. He allows nature to mold you and he becomes a witness. That's called Upadrashta, Anumanta, Anumanta. When you slowly discipline yourself and follow certain values, he seems to permit you, allow you to progress through your limitations. I gave you the example of the mother with an incorrigible child. She becomes a witness. Supposing this boy does all things well as expected by the parents and someday he asked the mother, Amma, today I am going to picture night show with my friend and I will sleep in his house. I'll come tomorrow morning. The mother has developed faith in him. And so she says, permits, Anumanta permits. So Bhagavan, under certain conditions, allows you to do certain things. Upadrashta Anumanta. The same mother, when this boy is studying for the exam, she also is awake. He is awake for reading, but she is also awake to give him timely tea and to see that he doesn't sleep. So she supports his activities. Bhartha. Bhartha. And then what happens? This boy has studied well and got a good job. Then what happens? He enjoys the efforts of all his disciplined life. Bhokta. And then what happens? He has further evolved, gone higher and higher in the ladder, becomes total control of things. Maheshwaraha. Similarly, you and I, too many vasanas, full of vasanas. God is only a witness, Upadrashta. Less vasanas, Anumanta. Little more, less vasanas supports you, Bhartha. Little more, less vasanas, you become the enjoyer of his divinity. You become aware, you become uh, alert, vigilant, right? And you enjoy the status of Godhood. Bhokta. And when you totally mastered over this prakriti, detached from this prakriti, you become Maheshwara. These are the various diamond, uh, dimensions of one God depending upon the media, the vasanas. So you can slowly improve yourself if you are not able to straight away practice, detach, attach, as Gurudev says. See here and see in meditation. If you are not able to do, gradually evolve according to your vasana. How to evolve gradually? 12th chapter, he gives the various sadhanas. Same here, he gives for four different types. There also for four different types. In the 12th chapter, Bhagavan has given, 12th chapter was the previous chapter only. We did it, right? And what are the various practices he has given us there? Mayeva manadasva, may buddhim niveshya, niveshashishya mayeva, atha vurdham nasamshya. Let your mind, intellect be absorbed in me, and you will definitely then live in me because mind, intellect are also nothing but consciousness. They are turned outward, and therefore they are missing their identity. When, when they turn inside, that is living in 
awareness of Bhagavan, they are withdrawn from the external world and they discover their identity with Bhagavan. That is the first cadre. Mayeva manataswa. May buddhim nivesiya. Nivasasya mayeva. Athavurtum nasamsaya. Athatittam samadatum nasaknoshi. If you cannot do that, abhyasena, through practice, japa, etc. You cannot do that also through dedicated activities. Makkarma paramo bhava, dedicated activities, yagna bhava. You can't do that also. Karma falatyagaha, kishnar panamastu. Like that, here he is in the 13th chapter, we are seeing Bhagavan appearing differently according to the vasanas. You have those vasanas, how do you evolve? That was given in the 12th chapter as Mayeva Manadas, Maya Buddhim, starting there to Karma Falatyaga. Right? So, all these in the classes, the teacher can only make you know that there is a subject like this. Merely listening, you won't get the benefit of it. You have to think, you have to contemplate. What else you, 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 is more important to you than to get out of all this mess through discovering that all this is Maya, you are that God? Is there something more important? If you say you have no time, even God cannot help you, Narayan. So, Upadrashtana Mantacha, Bhatta Bhukta Maheshwaraha, Paramatme Tichap Yuktaha, Dehesmin Purusha Paraha. In this body, the same Purusha appears differently according to the layers of vasanas. And he who discovers this purusha, having detached from the layers, he who knows this purusha, the seer, having detached from all that is seen, ya evam vetti purusham prakritim cha, Gudai Saha, he who could see them, see him clearly, clearly, in them and different from them, in the Prakriti and Gunas and different from them. Such a person has lost his individuality, the ego. Because he has clearly known he is the self. Therefore, the ego is dissolved into the self. When the ego is dissolved into the self, he will no more be born as this individual who is bound from this by this useless world. When the dreamer who was suffering wakes up, he no more goes to the dream. Because he knows he is different from that. So our sorrows, our problems can be solved by our efforts and matter only to give a conducive vehicles, environment for you to contemplate and know the real being that you are. Knowledge is the ultimate solution. Everything else are means for that. And how do people know? Dhyane Natmani Pashyanti Ketid Atmanam Atmana Anye Sankhena Yogena Karma Yogena Chapare. Depending upon the vasanas, some people know straight through meditation in himself, by himself. Some people through the various logics, Sankhena, Yogena, and through integrating the personality. And some people, through Karma Yoga, 
through karma yoga also when you do dedicated activities your existing vasanas get exhausted you do not create new vasanas and in the, in the course of time the vasanas become thin in that you can clearly feel the presence of this consciousness so different methods to suit different people anye te majan anye tu evam ajanantah shrutva api ye shrutva shrutva anyebhya upasate tepi chati taranteva mrityum shruti parayanah there are some people who had no exposure to discourses there are some people who have no exposure to meditations what do they do are they lost no whatever they have heard because people go on talking about this knowingly or unknowingly all people talk about this whatever little you have heard try to meditate on that whatever you have heard because for example everybody says ella avan sayal this is a very common thing meditate on that enna irukku indha ulagathula idella poi meditate on that right so like that whatever you have heard slowly meditate on that gradually you are gradually you are and now he is going to conclude this chapter of chetra and chetrakna ya yavat sanjayate kinchit satvam stavara jangamam chetra chetrakna yoga tadvidhi bhara darshabha whatever is there in this world moving not moving stones plants human beings all or nothing but a combination of chetra and chetrakna prakriti and purusha stones also have purusha yes your science have proved and they got nobel prize also for that that stones also has life so everything is existence life plus a form the form the name or give god by gunas vasanas and there is life in that too because existence is there existence and life are the same because existence exists therefore there is life life is there it exists therefore it is same they are not different fire is there in the wood it is not seen also sometimes but when it is lit in the wood you can see the fire form you can see light you can see heat you can feel form you can see light you can see heat you can feel in the wood fire same fire when it boils water water became heat in water you can only experience heat you cannot see the light or the form you can only experience heat therefore fire being the same according to the equipments you can feel the various aspects of bhagavan sat chit ananda so the same bhagavan is in the stone also there you will only see mere existence in plants and animals a little life it's only in the human beings you can see bhagavan as sat chit ananda right so bhagavan is mixed up with matter everywhere satya and satya anrutam midhuni krutya brahma sutras the world is satya anrutam midhuni krutya it's a mixture of satya and anruta 
This is also called superimposition, adhyasa. Adhyasa. What is adhyasa? Continue your learning, but all your learning will not help you do vipassana, meditate, discover love for God, maintain satsang, be in touch with your guru. You will evolve faster. Yavat sajjayate kinchit sattvam stavara jengama. Chetra chetra gnasam yoga vidhi bharata shabha. Samam sarveshu bhuteshu tishtantam parameshwaram vinasyashu avinasyantam yak pashyati sa pashyati. Water in the wave, water in the bubble, water in the ocean. When one sees samam, pasyanti, sees the same water, sarvatra in the wave, bubble in the ocean, vinasya shu, amongst the things that are subject to loss, one who sees this avinashi, who cannot be destroyed, He alone experiences God. That is, he has given us how to, you should know him, first he said. Then, how to know? He has given various means. And what is the sign of my knowing? He says, Samam Pashyan Hi Sarvatra. Samam Pashyati. When Samam Sarveshu Bhuteshu Tishtantam Parameshwaram Vinasya Shu. Why does it have repeating John? There's a lot of disturbance. Who is please mute your mics? Mute your mics, please. Samam Sarveshu Bhuteshu Tishtantam Parameshwaram Vinasya Shu Avinashyantam. Yak Pashyati Sapashyati. He who sees the indestructible in the destructible, is the not changing in the changing, the one who is essential being in the becoming, he alone sees God. Can you not simplify it? I can simplify it. It is true. When he sees God alone in anything, everything, when he sees nothing other than God, he knows. That's the simplest. There's nothing other than God. Earlier also he said good and bad and all that. That's all for our own thinking. The good, the bad, the stone, the plant, the animal. They're all his different expressions. And such a person, samam pasyan hi sarvatra, samavasti tamishwaram, nahi, nahi nas, na hinasyati atmana atmanam tato yati paramrati the one who sees himself to be the water in the wave the bubble and the ocean he gets never destroyed because wave can die or bubble can die ocean can change ocean can change but water nothing happens so he who sees himself samam pasyati sarvatra samavastita mishwaram nahi he never he never destroys means he never comes to suffer the changing egoistic manifestation like the wave and the bubble he experiences the essential being the water Prakrityevachakarmani Kriyamanani Sarvashaha Nap Sapashati Tata Atmanam Akattaram Sapash. If you want one sloka in this whole chapter to contemplate and to experience that truth, 
this one sloka simple sloka contemplate the chaya sloka i am going to take that one is enough you can donate all your books to others because this is simple meditation this one sloka is enough what does he say prakrityeva cha karmani kriyamanani sarvashah yah pashyati tatha atmanam akartaram sa pashya my body acts my mind reacts my intellect thinks i do not act i do not react i do not think i am the witness even beyond the witness he who can thus see the body to be different mind to be different intellect to be different all functions actions and reactions belong to the body mind intellect and he the non doer actions reactions belong to the prakriti the body mind intellect he is the non doer akarta there are kartas all joys and sorrows belong to them he is absolute bliss absence of joys and sorrows is not a nothingness it's total indestructible indivisible bliss that's what you are you are missing that because you are seeing yourself through various folds which drive yourself from all those uh, encrustations feel your presence with the draw from everything else feel your presence prakrutyeva karmani nature vasanas prakruti kriyamanani sarvashah they only make all activities possible yah pashyati tatha atmanam he who seems himself as akartaram non to your sapashyati he alone knows this truth ியல் being and you have discovered yourself to be that brahman when i have known the enemy the friend the mountain the ocean the aeroplane the car in my dream are all me and my own extensions i have become the waker when i know this entire world of opposites they are all my own expressions they are all my own expressions i have only projected them and they are all multiply from me only when you know that he becomes brahman what is brahman that which is the biggest how big how big nothing other than that that means other things you see see all other things that you see as that brahman biggest how big nothing other than that then what about what all i am seeing they are all nothing but brahman sukh brahman dukh brahman friend brahman enemy brahman honor brahman dishonor brahman pain brahman comfort brahman practice this sir do not be carried away by my rhetoric this will not save you this will not save me rhetoric will not save you rhetoric will not save me please practice yatha sarvagatam sapna dakasham upalipyate sarvatra avasthito dehi tatha atma upalipyate 
because subtle the subtle one cannot be contaminated by the grosser one what is subtle what is grass ice is grass water is subtle vapor is subtle subtlety is measured in the particular more so the subtle one cannot be contaminated or conditioned by a grosser one so according to the logic what is subtle is what occupies more space god brahman is the subtlest because he occupies everywhere he occupies everywhere and therefore he cannot be contaminated by anything in this world your sorrows your comfort your pain your poverty cannot contaminate him therefore you should know him how as ever says yatha sarvagatam sopna akasham upadikati sarvatra avasthito dehi tatha atma this self though in your own body is never contaminated by the defects of the body mind or intellect because it's the subtlest yatha prakashayat yekah krishnam lokam imam ravihi chetra chetri tatha krishnam prakashayati bharata just as one sun illumines this entire manifold world this purusha completely illumines not only your entire world the entire world of all beings this chetrajna alone illumines this clue is enough because of whom i am able to see because of whom i am able to talk because of whom i am able to shake my hand that is the purusha that is the purusha so that's all again in a formality chetra chetra gnayo ho evam antaram nana chakshusha bhuta prakriti mocham cha ye bituhi yanti parte par de who have known understood this chetra chetra gna and this prakriti purusha they go to a state beyond all limitation aram gati supreme gati beyond all limitations birth death etc so that's why you have to know this if you know this you become brahman brahma with brahma yo bhavati and when you become brahman you go beyond all limitations right so that the 13th chapter is done in this class right this status is not gained through any action is through knowledge how do you get the knowledge by contemplation how do you get contemplate how do you contemplate by what you have heard shravana manana nididhyasa right and now 13th chapter is done the 14th chapter is a very practical chapter helping us how to detach from these gunas these various modes of prakriti prakriti manifests as sattva guna rajo guna tamo guna prakriti itself manifests as sattva guna rajo guna tamo guna and bhagavan is aguni so all that is guna when told you detach from all that is guna and then discover you are different from the gunas gunebhya param veti you are different from the guna guna means that which binds guna means rope guna means quality because both bind sattva guna also bind rajo guna binds tamo guna binds rope binds both all of them bind to be liberated go beyond all the three gunas how each one binds including sattva guna how to get liberated are the topics of the most practical utilitarian chapter the 14th chapter 
it is about the mind identification of the mind detaching from the mind managing the mind transcending the mind this is the 14th chapter it's people consider this as not so important chapter but bhagwan says this is the highest how can knowledge of the qualities be the highest how can the knowledge of gunas be the highest because what is the point in knowing the highest without having the means to know the highest knowing the highest means information you have the information of the highest because you cannot actualize it what is the point if when you have the means to actualize it that knowledge is more important than the book knowledge you got the knowledge that can internalize the knowledge that can give you the experience is more important than all that you have heard mere words satyam gnanam anantam brahma shantam shivam advaitam all these are words as long as you do not experience why you do not experience how to experience that is the subject matter of the 14th chapter it's called guna traya vibhaga yoga analysis of the three gunas why bhagwan created these three gunas body is tamas inner mind is agitated intellect is contemplate now you have no body how will you act mind through mind alone you cannot transact but transactions you need body the tamas body is there intellect is there can you act you have the knowledge you have the instrument no you need the passion that passion is the mind it is that passion that makes you restless and through that restlessness you gradually evolve that is the mind they are all to be guided by the intellect intellect is sattva mind is rajas body is tamas you need all the three you need the creator brahma sattva sorry Uh, rajas you need the creator brahma rajas you need the sustainer vishnu sattva you need the one who dissolves shiva tamas in the case of gods they use the gunas therefore they are maheshwaras in never case gunas use you in the case of god they use the gunas in never case gunas use you you know learn the art of detaching from the gunas seeing yourself to be the gun different from the gunas gune bya param veti then you discover yourself to be that god therefore this chapter is very 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 important and hence bhagavan himself says in the very first shloka sri bhagavan param bhuyah pravakshami jnananam jnanamuttam yajnatva munayah sarve param siddhim yatah gatah param bhuyah that supreme knowledge again i tell you what is again i told you so many times then why are you repeating because you are not able to get it i had told you earlier then why are you repeating you didn't get it so i have to say subtle things have to be repeated subtle truths have to be repeated param bhuyah pravakshami vakshami i shall tell pravakshami i shall tell you in completeness theory and practice completeness nananam nanamottam the the highest or the superior most nanam of all the other gnanas knowledge of physics knowledge of chemistry they all give you certain comfort in life no doubt in that but that knowledge which gives you freedom from all wants and limitations and makes you discover the one who creates 
the entire universe maintains and dissolves the one who is not conditioned by them in and through all these activities that knowledge is the highest because knowing which there's nothing more to be known gaining which there's nothing more to be gained param bhuyah pravachyami gnananam gnanam uttam yajnatva having known which munayah the contemplative ones manana silavan is called muni from that only comes mauna munehe swabhavah maunah the one who contemplates become silent you cannot contemplate and go on talking also so silence comes out of contemplation therefore it's called mauna it's not that you physically don't talk but mentally go on imagining and go on sending messages whatsapp messages that's not silence yagnatva munaya sarve param siddhim itaha gataha they have reached the highest siddhi siddhi is that which is got through sadhana is called siddhi we have several siddhis gaining several things they are all finite param siddhim the highest is not gained through action is gained through knowledge therefore he says yagnatva having known that having got that you go you gain the highest siddhi you get the highest how do you know that yagnatva munayah be a contemplative one if you are a contemplative one you will gain that highest idam jnanam upasritya mam sadharmam agatah sargeti na upajayante pralaye na vyathayanti cha depending upon this knowledge people gain my own being they are not born they don't die they are not born in creation they don't die in dissolution again contemplate on your water ocean and all that no knowledge of the water will make you free from the birth and death of the wave and the bubble knowledge of the water will make you free from the limitations of the wave and the bubble and they have birth they have death therefore all the intermediary stages because of which you suffer they are all there for forms that which is behind the forms the vastu that, that never suffers the limitations of all the expressions mama yonil mahat brahma tasmin garbham dadami aham sambhava sarva bhutanam tato bhavati bharata this whole world is prakriti purusha in fact they are not two different things they are me only sun and sunlight are never different fire and heat are never different prakriti and purusha are not different from brahman the changing wave the changeless ocean both are expressions of one water the changing wave the lower prakriti the changeless ocean higher prakriti all these are only expressions of the one who is beyond prakriti the purusha so mama yoni mahat brahma prakriti is my own only and in that i keep the seed that means i enter as the purusha from that all expression sarva bhutanam tatah bhavati express the prakriti whose lower nature in which he keeps the seed higher nature from that comes all the various expressions prakriti purusha some uh, combination chetra chetragna yoga he has said in the last chapter we call it last chapter because we call it last chapter because when we have discussed it it's last to us सर्वूतेषु कौंते मूर्त संभवती ब्रह्म महत्ोनी अहम बीजपद प्रभा